Do you need cleanliness? Do you need a little bit of chaos in order to do your best work? <laughs> do you need quiet? Do you need loud? Do you need one-on-one? -on -one? Do you need group? Do you need solo? that's prepared an environment for self-guided instruction? Do you need a mix of materials all in one space? Do you need for them to be separated? How, how high up do you need for them to be stored? Mm. Or how, how low down? Mm. And using those conversations ever more as an opportunity to shape this, this space around our young people. And it's an area of challenge for me. I, I'm not just a community organizer, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an organizer of stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a vestige of old and one that my my family, I feel like was it was it was like now I see it very much as a gift to me, but one that, you know, may not have been as prioritized for other people in, in their households or their development, their environments of development. And so coming together to talk about truly like, what do we need? Mm -hmm. what do we need in order to get something done and then agreeing on what that something is helps mm. us better structure our space and it's it is an ongoing challenge because right. people's needs for structure change from moment to moment week to week year to year then we obviously attract new community members every year and what they need then influences changes to the environment so keeping up with that uh, along with an, a resource assessment and, mm -hmm. and what we have available to us is a challenge that we welcome and it provides problem solving opportunities that n not only bring us closer together but mm -hmm. grow us as individuals and, and grow our students academically because when we look at a blank wall in the space and we go, wow, this looks so blank. And so, <laughs> you know, we've got to do, what should we, what should we do with it? What should go on that wall? Either, mm -hmm. you know, like physically, should, should we move bookshelves and tables over there? Or, or should we paint, should we paint a mural here? Our students, get to say well i i'm a visual artist and it's hard for for me to 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 see create creativity when i'm not reflected and that i would like to see faces go onto this wall or mm. you know i i want the ability to be able to to spin around a couple of times once i've finished with the, with an activity and having a kitchenette and an art table and our our slime bucket in here doesn't give me the space to do that so we need to move mm. those centers outside of the room and we have that that flexibility now that we are in a, a new space and we are in the process the the ongoing process of develop of developing it we're building walls inside of inside mm. of this this space where we're adding insulation to, to, to classrooms in order to create sound barriers where we're, the uh, teachers are getting help from students to physically lift bookshelves in order to create nooks and nooks and cubbies. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're raising the height of our chairs and tables or lowering them in order to, to fit where are our students. So it's like, oh, well, so-and-so had a growth spurt over the summer and now <laughs> that standing desk that we got for them, we've got to make sure to bump it up six inches so that they can mm -hmm. still stand at it. How are we going to do that together? And so those are, those are challenges that if you're, if you're at Brooklyn Free School, you're going to continue to welcome. Nice. Uh, this is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs>